it's uh, 6.02. I'm going to call this meeting of the Student Council Economic Development Committee to order. Uh, let's run the roll call. Uh, no, let's do this statement. The meeting is being recorded by the Economic Development Committee. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Hearing none, I'll move on. There's that stuff about no uh, person shall address without permission, which I'm going to skip because we're not going to throw anybody out. Now we'll do the roll call. Councillor Elmer is here. Councillor Bottomley told me he wouldn't make it. Councillor Gilmore is here. Councillor Healy's here. We have a quorum. Okay. Uh, we have minutes to approve. Uh, anybody have any changes they want to make? Uh, anybody no. want to? I'll I'll move that we approve the minutes as written. Do I have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. And I'm in favor. Excellent. Thank you. No public hearing. Um, two motions that we uh, are, are supposed to act on tonight. Uh, the sale of the city owned land at 188 Main Street and then acceptance of the easement. Uh, there's a memo apparently. Uh, the 188, there's some apparently uh, um, on the sale of that property. <clears throat> we have a hand raised up by Amy. Okay, Amy, can you explain what's going on? I sure can. I thought I'd um, help out. Uh, on the agenda, it was listed the sale of 188 Main, but all that we're looking to do right now is surplus the property so that when the incoming mayor takes office, she has the ability to negotiate the sale. Right. And it's I can do you want some context for the plan? If, if you'd like. I, uh, 30 second one, 188 Main is a tiny um, parcel that's not really able to be developed into a separate building or a retail space. The owner of the adjacent space is Tim Grader. He's currently working on some second floor um, mixed income housing. And the property at 188 Main um, is situated such that it would allow him to install stairs in an elevator and make that second floor um, housing accessible. It's too early in the process right now to be negotiating the sale, but we just wanna have things lined up and let him know so that as he proceeds, um, he can plan appropriately. Right. This is the property that was um, a nail salon. It sits over the railroad. Yes, it was a building that, if you recall, was falling into the railroad for right. a and period of time. Knocked, and it was... so, city knocked it down and put up a piece of plywood. Exactly. Uh, and that's where it stands now. And he, yes. he, can, he can use it. He can use it, yes. And it would it would go towards making some housing downtown accessible. Right. And this is a two-step process. First, the city council has to give you uh, permission to declare it. Uh, what's the to word? Surplus it. Surplus. Surplus. And then, and then there would be a sale. Yes. Okay. But uh, my understanding is that the two motions need to travel together, which is why the the motion for sale is floating together with the surplus. But all so the we're we're, we're supposed to uh, deliver it on that as well. Both. Both the surplus. All we're looking for is approval of the surplus. Okay. Not the motion to sell. All right. Any discussion, Sheila or Derek? I have a question. So once we surplus the property, I mean, really anybody could buy it, right? Um, once you surplus the property, oh, I'm sorry. Did you want me to answer? Go ahead. Anyway, explain. <laughs> it. Once you surplus the property, it would be um essentially in the control of the mayor's office. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, they could, I suppose, sell to an, another person or entity. Um, it's, a, it's an oddball property that I can't imagine there's much of a market for, but for somebody with an adjacent parcel that could make use of the land. Oh, no, um, I understand it's an oddball property. Yeah. It just kind of feels <laughs> bad that, you know, sometimes it feels like we do things to facilitate for individuals rather than just say like, oh, this is for sale because of the needs of the city. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I, I feel like sometimes we put the cart before the horse when we do it that way. And it feels very, um, I don't want to say engineer. It just, it, 
it feels like this should go up for anyone who might have an idea for what, I mean, obviously I'm looking at it and this is not someplace where you're going to build your dream house. I get that. I just want to make sure that I understand the process. Sure. Yeah, I, Sheila, you're right that uh, we're just, uh, a, we're, we're considering the surplusing of it. Who it goes to uh, is a matter of the market. Wh whoever wants to buy it, right? Mm -hmm. Amy? That's my understanding that this would then allow the mayor to negotiate with a prospective interested party. Derek, you have your hand up. Yeah, so I, I do business in a lot of other towns and cities. Um, and in situations like this, uh, I'm kind of confused why it wouldn't go out for an RFP. Um, I thought it was state law that you had to put it out for an RFP for potential bidders. So you can't just sell it to a private ind individual. You'd list an RFP. If they're the only bidder, great. That's great. But it should be going out for like an RFP package from my understanding. Maybe Thank you, you. Yes. that's. I think that's the process I was asking about. Thank you, Derek. Because I'm... I'm there's a barn in Deerfield I've been trying to buy um, and they, they, their town lawyer won't sell it to me without putting it out to RFP. And I've offered to buy, build the town a new garage, um, but they, they won't even do, do it without an RFP and I won't build them a garage, not knowing that I'm not getting the property, you know? Amy, uh, yep. is that right that, that we would put out an RFP? Generally speaking, that's right. I don't know if there's particulars to this property that would, that would create a different scenario, but again, I think what we're looking for tonight is the surplusing to enable the mayor's office to design an RFP to decide if that's the right process to take whatever the next steps are that the city solicitor decides. Yep. And I can I, agree I, with I, that total. Yep. Yeah. So, so um, uh, pr provisionally, we could uh, give us a positive recommendation with a note that we would expect that an RFP would follow. How does that sound? I would Derek. be comfortable with that. I, I would I would be comfortable with that as well. All right. Uh wanna make a motion? So yeah. I move that we mark this as or declare this as surplus property with the understanding that there will be an RFP and an open and transparent process that anyone can participate in. All right. Second. Uh, any, any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we will send this forward with a positive recommendation and that caveat. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to the second item on the agenda. Uh, I have to make a long, uh, first of all, we have some guests from the bank who are involved in this, uh, seeking this easement for seven parking spaces uh, that were uh, right now are being used by the new library. I had to go to Boston to clear myself to vote on this. I would have recused myself, but I was afraid we'd only have three people, and that's the case. So here's the situation. My wife, Margot Jones, was hired by her former firm, Jones Witsit Architecture, to do, um, uh, what's, the, what's the word? The bank was interested in buying the old library. Uh, she had to do a, uh, she was asked to do a feasibility study uh, for the bank to see if that would work for them, what would be involved in architecturally and then taking over the building. Uh, Margot did that on a freelance basis for a firm that she founded and still has her name, but uh, which she has been retired from for two years. Whether we vote this up or down, she's already done the work and been paid for it. And the lawyer who listened to the uh, thing said, agreed with me that whichever way we make a recommendation on this, it will not affect the work she's already done or her uh, opportunities for further work of this kind. So he gave me written permission not to recuse myself. That's a long way of saying um, that I can vote on this. So uh, you guys want to explain what's going on? So well, we are looking for seven parking spaces. Uh, we introduce are, introduce yourself. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. I'm, I'm Thomas Pacheco. I'm the president and CEO of Greenfield Savings Bank. My name is Jim Lloyd. I'm a vice president of security and safety for Greenfield Savings Bank. And as we're 
uh, making the acquisition of the library or the Levitt Hubby House. Uh, we felt that it, we needed some parking because we're going to be adding probably 30 people in that facility that, and probably 12 of them do not currently work in Greenfield. The other thing is that we have clients of the wealth management and residential lending area will be using that space. And we would like to have some parking for those customers. Some of them are elderly and there's going to be an elevator uh, right up from where those parking spots that are shown in the diagram. So they would be able to walk straight up and into the elevator to access it for ADA purposes. As well as there's been some talk, we went to the Historical Commission uh, last, uh, actually, yes, last Thursday. Yes, Thursday yeah, last Thursday evening. evening at the Zion building. And we had someone there from the Library Commission, we believe, he was, he joined as an individual, but he came and asked us if we'd be willing to add more handicapped parking spaces when we removed the bookmobile at the current facility because they believe that more handicapped spots were needed. So even though we're taking seven, I'm looking at possibly adding two more handicap on this side of the, of the building, which could be used by the library as well. And I think that they're really interested in, in having more handicapped spots. So uh, that's not part of this initiative. It's just to get the seven, this four that face the building and three, three that, face. that face Greenfield Savings Bank right now. Um, and so there were questions that were asked, would we allow these spaces to be used by the community after hours? I said, yes, as long as a customer, some customers do come like around five o'clock after work to do activities with us for originations or for wealth management services. If that wasn't the case, yes. So we are open to allowing those spaces to be used by the town, non-banking hours, just like everyone uses our current parking lot for downtown parking after hours currently. So I just thought I would, we would come and support. We didn't want anyone to ask if anyone had a question that no one was here to represent us. Was there anything else you thought we should add? No, I believe that covers it. Okay, Sheila and Derek. Um, yeah, Derek, you got your hand up. Yeah, I, I have a few questions, and, and some might go back to Andy Torog, and some might uh, go to the Greenfield Savings Bank folks. But um, typically when you build a new building, there's there's parking requirements set forth by the zoning ordinance. And I want to make sure the city of Greenfield is protecting themselves and that, you know, them themselves are not have to, going to have to grant themselves a variance uh, if we eliminate these parking from the library. So did anybody check to make sure we had surplus parking to give away for the library based on, you know, our zoning ordinance? I believe the your attorney did. Okay. Our, our attorney, David Bloomberg, has been dealing with Greg Schmidt for the town. Okay. And, and then they, there's, there's significant parking there. And that lot is not, it is not just a library lot. I was informed that it's also... Uh, I was talking to well, I don't another person in the in the city, and they said that that is a municipal parking lot, not just a library parking lot. Now, I'm not a thousand percent sure that that is true, but that is what I was informed. No, I think that for me, it's it's really just crossing our eyes and dotting our teeth yes. so this can come back, right? So, uh, you're a great business in town. We appreciate everything you do for the community. It's 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 a no brainer to me, but I'm I'm a man of business myself, and I just want to make sure that we don't have to go back again and look at this again because we missed something. So it sounds like that issue has been addressed. And then the other issue is, um, you know, maintenance and and all those things. So we're granting an easement, and I didn't read through was was there language attached to this? I I've been out with COVID, so I'm just kind of getting back on my feet. Was there any easement language attached with that agreement? I saw the drawing, but I don't know that I saw a physical document. Well. It's it's all part of the same lot, so it would be very difficult for the town not to plow these spots. Now, on the other hand, we do shovel 
the walkways currently that go from Greenfield to the library. So we would continue to allow people to have access on the walkways. We will maintain all the walkways which people park and walk from our building to the new library. Um, you know, I I don't know how you can park, how you can plow that parking lot and not plow our seven spaces, to be honest I have, with you. I have no problem plowing the, those seven spaces, but it, in 10 years down the road, when we all go back and look at this, if it's not in writing somewhere on who's maintaining this, it opens up the question and we end up having to repave a lot or do something like we I don't, Sheila's probably familiar with what previously happened at another parking lot, right? So I just want to make sure that this agreement is is very specific on who's doing what and what's supposed to be done. You know, that's that's my only concern. And my my understanding is the um, our attorney and the city's attorney uh, have discussed that, and there is language uh, to that. Okay. It's not in this uh, this single sheet of paper, but they do say that uh, there was a long negotiation between the city's lawyers and the bank's lawyers, um, and it sounds like something was hashed out that they're both sides are happy with. Yeah, correctly. yeah. Um, I, I would like to I would like to table this until I see that agreement. That's just my opinion. You want to table it until I see the agreement. I want to see the language. Okay, this will move it over to next year. The um, yeah. Well, if they would have put the language in, Councillor Elmer, I, I wouldn't be doing this, right? <laughs> All right. No one informed no, us that, a, that you wanted this language. No, he he also makes a really good point. I mean, one of the big things that we hear about from constituents is a lack of parking in downtown, yeah. and I know that. In my opinion, the parking lot for the new library seemed big for for the footprints of the building, but for, you know, whatever reason we, ha we needed to have that number of parking spaces. So I would like to do a little more homework on this too, because I know we were talking about, you know, if you did anything but change the paint colors in the new library, it was going to jeopardize the grant. So I want to make sure that nothing we do is going to cause problems there. Um, but also, like, having that stuff well-documented is really important. I think that everybody, you know, in this room means well and is going to try and do the best thing for, you know, the public, for the property, for, you know, all of our neighbors. But like Derek says, in 10 years, we don't know, you know, who's going to be on city council. We don't know who's going to be, you know, working in these buildings. And if we get into it with, you know, who's supposed to be plowing and maintaining I mean, we did just go through that, and it it was really tedious. In the RFP that I presented to make this acquisition of this building, I did attach, there were multiple articles talking about how there really is no shortage of parking in downtown Greenfield, and that, but, you know, that's fine. You know, I, I just wanted to state that that is one of the things that I did put in the RFP, is that... Right. Uh, there yeah, are that, a lot of there are a lot of parking lots. There are parking garage, and you know I agree with you. It should be reviewed. I just was under the impression that everything that you were going to review today, someone had reviewed and, and made sure all the documentation was here you needed. If that's not the case, we will work to get that documentation for you, and we can wait. I was just hoping that we could start the process. Because there's more processes to go through before we can start doing anything on this building, then actually this is the last step to close on the purchase. And it's, it's, it's similar to what we went to the historical. Do you ask for historical approval before you buy the building or after you buy it? Well, if you don't have historical approval, maybe you don't want to buy the building. But oh no, I you completely know. yeah, I completely understand. But you know, from our perspective. You know, when we're talking to constituents, I mean, of course, everyone cares about facts, but if the perception is that there's not enough parking, I mean, you can show people graphs, you can show them like a list of all the parking places. I mean, there's only so much that you can do when, you know, people hold a certain perception. So that gets okay. to be challenging too. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, as long as we go through a good transparent process, you know, where everybody feels like, you know, they all know what's going on. We get a chance to look at the the documents that the lawyers were hashing out, hashing it out over. 
I don't, I don't see a big problem. I don't see a big controversy, but I just want to make sure that we're, you know, dotting our I's and crossing our T's like Derek was saying. Well, the, the, um, the, the state of city parking really isn't on the agenda to, today. We, we've had a whole parking study uh, yes. and that's, that's not really what we have to deal with. Uh, I, my understanding is that, the, that, that you guys won't buy the bank, the old bank, until the old library. The old library sorry, you won't buy the old library until the city council approves this parking space well, deal. It, it, it also, it's the whole with the, um, well, what it, it's not just the parking, but also the uh, variance or you need a variance. Yes, yes, and and uh, right. and you know you I, can't buy the building until you have the variance. Correct. Okay, that's what we're told. I mean, if you know, I'll go back. I mean, I, well, here's, you know, I don't. I, we don't have to build the the additional handicap spots. You know, I I mean, we were doing that as a favor for this, and you know, I that. That's nowhere in the plan that we're gonna we're gonna add to handicap parking. Right. That's that, and that's also not on our, right. our table Correct. today. No, uh, I'm saying that's when I say something, I I I my my word is what I say. And uh, that's what we had talked about the other night. But that's fine. If if we have to get the information, I will talk to our attorney tomorrow. We'll make sure we get you know. So can we just make sure we know what we are requesting? We're asking for something that talks about the maintenance of the parking lot and what is the other item? No, no, there? All, there should be a legal document attached to the easement drawing right. describing there, meets and bounds of the easement, what's what's being handled by- I, I'm pod, that, was, that was definitely done and it was definitely shared uh, two days ago. And that's why I thought that it would have been here. Um, but I oh, guess yes. So for anything to get into the agenda, it takes more than two days. So that's probably what it is. So this, this is um, what we have is the one yeah. page. No, that's that we 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 paid we actually paid an attorney to do the easement and make it uh show the seven spaces because there was some confusion. It was on the firehouse property because of the drawing. And so it's been a little bit more in depth than what I had assumed. So uh, it's a process. It is a process. <laughs> so, so here's the situation. Um, this is our last EDC meeting before the, the city council meeting on Wednesday. We've been asked to make a recommendation, yay or nay or mix, uh, before that meeting. Derek, my understanding is you want to table this for this committee until uh, next month, at which point. Uh, we would have more documentation. Uh, I don't see a way to get the documentation to us before Wednesday. Okay, let's, we'll let's, let's do it this way, Councillor Elmer, if this is legal. Um, instead of tabling it, I'm I'm gonna not I'm gonna not vote towards this today. I'm gonna so we're not gonna have a recommendation coming out of council. But um, I want these documents before our next meeting, so I have some when we debate it in our city council meeting if there's anything glaring in that i can make some points there and if if that point when it's in front of full council it loses the vote i'm comfortable with that but at least and if i don't get the documents by then i'm going to be sure to tell everybody on the council that i asked for them i didn't get it in good faith and we'll go from there right um that way they're not okay, well, if, if councillor uh gilmore's comfortable with that as well i'm willing to do that no i agree i think it would be you know well i think i'm probably <laughs> eventually going to be a yes on this because I don't see anything unreasonable here. It is our responsibility to check these things with a fine tooth comb. And, you know, it takes longer than two doc uh, two days for documents to get into, you know, our agendas because government just moves slow. You know, we're not as nimble as private business. And, you know, that can be a good thing in some cases. And sometimes it's a bad thing. But it is what it is. And, you know, we just have to do our due diligence. But I imagine that we have time to get this into the packet for our full council meeting next week. And if that's the case, then I'm happy and comfortable to vote uh, at full council, which is where it really matters. I mean, it doesn't right. matter so what the recommend. I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but the recommendation coming from this committee doesn't bind the city council in any way. So. Right. 
So you, with, uh, they're going to ask us what the recommendation of the committee is. Uh, what should I tell them? That we didn't have enough information at the time to make a recommendation, and we asked for this information, and if we received it, it's in the packet, right? Okay. We will have I, <laughs> Mr. Bloomberg will talk to Mr. Schmidt, who should have that document, and if not, I will walk <laughs> it over to the town okay. all tomorrow or email to you. I don't know what you are looking for. Uh, for delivery, I, I would give it to the city clerk and have her. Okay. Um, yeah, she could. She tell her can, tell her from the BBC. I will. Okay. All right. So we're going to let this one fly, uh, and we'll um, we'll explain it to the full council. Now, I had told you guys that uh, we had a very short agenda today because. Uh, my understanding was that the rest, you guys are free. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, very nice meeting take, you. Take care. Thanks for coming by. Uh, I was told that the rest of the uh, agenda was going to be dropped, but then the city clerk put it back in uh, as something to discuss. Uh, and this is multiple pages. So this, I'm not going to be here <laughs> at the next uh, EDC. Um, uh, let me see if I can explain this better. The planning board has not moved on any of these planning board suggestions. They didn't get a chance to deliberate. They didn't have a quorum, as Sheila knows. Um, so they're not going to take this up until December 7th. Uh, and uh, it was the chair's uh, at the chair's meeting, uh, what the president said is he didn't want us deliberating on these until we knew what the planning board had done. So uh, these things are here as discussions. And uh, if you want to discuss them, we can. If you want to just punt and wait till next year, we can also do that. What I'm glad that you clarified. Yeah, I was, I was kind of wondering... You know, the whole point of a discussion is like, you know, the body gets together, we discuss it, we have a chance to sleep on it, mull it over, do some homework, and then usually the following month, or maybe even a month after that, we would vote on it. So it did seem sort of strange to have it in a December meeting when we have so many people leaving city council. And, you know, Derek and I don't know if we're going to be on EDC next year right. or not. Right. I, we, I mean, they shake them up, so... Did you did you have any thoughts you want to share on any of these before we drop them, or, or um, we can go through them one by one if you want. Well, I I kind of want to see what the planning board recommends because I feel like if we discuss it as it stands now, and then the planning board makes a change, then it would just have to start the whole thing all right. you know, right? Because we're it's we still it's still a moving target. I think the city clerk's thought was because we three had been at the at the public uh, hearing mm -hmm. that uh, we might want to share our thoughts from the public hearing. Uh, I think the, the what I remember from it is that, that roosters are an issue. Um, again, I don't, you know, it's it's hard to deliberate unless we know what yeah. we're going to be facing. Uh, I'll tell you, yeah. I've had a lot of phone calls about roosters, and one time I was actually in the car with my in-laws, and, uh, you know, they kind of looked at me weird. I was like, I never thought being in city council was going to be so uh, rooster-heavy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, that was a problem for me, just because I feel like, you know, the right to farm and the right to have your own backyard, you know, what people do on their personal property is their own opinion, but that's just the conservative in me, right? So it's 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 tough for me to tell people they can't do something on their property especially in in the rural parts of the community you know um and and it seems like it's spread across the whole city in all the residential zoning districts even though you have rural residential which i have farms right by me that have cows that moo all day and i live right next to them right but you, you're gonna tell me i can't have a rooster <laughs> well this so. is the um the city does have ordinances. Uh, and when the city passes an ordinance, it's supposed to mean something. I think the issue here was that the rooster, the people who wanted to raise roosters or had raised roosters, 
want it to be a sort of case by case thing. If the neighbors complain, then uh, then it can be uh, then they'll get rid of their roosters. But Sheila, you're telling me you were getting complaints about roosters driving yeah, around with your in laws. Right. So my uh, my precinct is different, though. I mean, I'm closer to downtown. We have smaller lot sizes. So, I mean, if I open up my windows in the summertime, you know, I could, you know, throw a baseball with my next door neighbors. We could play catch. Our houses are so close together. You know, it's, you know, if I had a rooster that was like, you know, 10 yards away from my bedroom window, I could see being really irritated by that. I mean, my neighbors are pretty quiet, so I don't have to worry about it. But I, um, I think that the, the idea of this was it was not explicit uh, in the in the rules about whether you could have a rooster or not. And the planning board, I'm not sure where the idea came from, was going to make it explicit. Uh, and uh, I, I'm i not sure... Uh, I think we're split on it, right? We have mixed feelings about yeah. whether whether it should be tightened up or not. Uh, I'm not sure what... If there are a lot of rooster complaints, I could see why the city would want to cut down on the phone calls and the police visits and all, the, all that goes with handling a rooster complaint by making it explicit where you can have them and where you can't. Uh, I yeah. don't know where they got the five... Uh, acre limit is uh, uh, right yeah and if you have four and a half acres and you want to have a rooster then it kind of feels like well now what right yeah yeah, yeah. but In yeah and I I'll say like it I've served on city council for six years now and I've had like three phone calls so it's not like a daily occurrence right okay well as I say we can't really we can discuss we can't deliberate um, and we certainly have, uh, we're certainly allowed to punt this down the road, wait to see what the planning board does. Is that how you that feel about that's what That's your preference. That's your preference. Any yeah. others that caught your eye? I and mean, some of them are very complicated. Uh, the, the marijuana expansion turns out to be just for delivery people. It's a business that they want, uh, that the state wants us to make available to uh, people who've been affected by drug laws. Uh, I didn't have a problem with that. Uh, I, uh, the, anyway, anything else you want to discuss from all that, all those things, or would you just like to, would we like to um, adjourn? I'd be willing to make a motion to adjourn. Second. I would, I would uh, list any discussion on that? I'm for, let's vote. Well, I mean, I, I would, Richard. All okay. in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Okay, we're done.